Hey, y'all, and welcome back to LW Pharmacy Technician School channel. It is Sunday here in Houston, Texas, and I'm excited to be here with you. If you are joining for the first time, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you can get the notifications when we upload content. If you want to connect with me, use that number down at the bottom, 903-295-5933. That is where you can connect with me and we can um, either book group tutorial sessions or we can get you um, enrolled in one of our programs if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but today we're going to be talking about communication skills, okay? Um, this is something that is important to your employer, okay? So I get quite a bit of employers who reach out to me and they're like, hey, can you make sure that these techs are ready for it to be employed when they leave your course? So one of the things I want to talk about is good com communication skills. Good communication skills and what that looks like. So a to be a good communicator, you need to make sure that you're listening, right? So right now, while I'm talking, you're listening. And then when you talk, I'll listen, okay? So when we think about communication, we want to think about compassion. We want to think about tech, right? We want to think about everything that is listed here. When we're communicating, we're listening because remember, a lot of our clients, our patients, our customers may be coming from the doctor. They may have just heard some bad news. Somebody could have just passed away. There's so many different things that could cause them to come to the pharmacy. And so when they come, we want to make sure that they feel welcomed, right? We want to make sure that they feel heard and we want to make sure that these people walk away getting what they need. So to have good communication skills, you must have all of the above. All of the above is going to give you that good communication that you desire. Body language. Now look, y'all know we got to... Um, we got to practice on our body language, okay? Look, I know me for a fact, baby, because it's here to get the rolling. Um, if I start thinking something that ain't... Look, even when I feel good, my head gets to still doing all of this. Um, but when you think about body language, it needs to convey positivity, right? Especially when you're in the pharmacy and you're working. What is positive body language? It's eye contact, right? Um, positive body language could be making sure that you're listening, right? Making sure that you're not closed off. Because if I'm sitting here looking at you like this, that means I'm ready for you to hurry up, right? So we want to make sure that our body language convey an attitude of what? What do you think our attitude should be in our body language? Helpfulness and concern, friendliness and a sense of urgency, seriousness and professionalism, or service and dedication. So if I'm friendly, but I'm like, my, I'm friendly, but I have a sense of urgency. So I might say, hey, how are you? How's, how's everything going? How can I help you today? That may make you feel like you need to increase what you give back to me. So you may say, hey, my name is Brittany and I need such and such and so and so. Okay, wait, one second, Brittany, I'll be right back. So it's like now the person may feel rushed. They may not feel like they're being handled with care. Seriousness and professionalism may look a little bit like this. Hi, Brittany, what brings you in today? We need to, what do, what do we need to get for you today? Brittany, like, dang, this is real serious. But if I'm helpful and I have a concern, it's, hey, Brittany, how can I help you? Um, can you tell me exactly what, what you need? What are you picking up today? Okay, I'll be right back. I'm helpful and I'm concerned. Is that all that you need to get today, Brittany? Okay, good. Okay, service and dedication. Obviously, we want to be dedicated, but the most important thing that our body language should convey is going to be uh, helpfulness and concern. Helpfulness and concern, okay? Because that's important when they come to the pharmacy. Um, form of communication is judged by others in the first 30 seconds of meeting them. Did you know that in the first 30 seconds of someone meeting you, they've already made judgment about you? Did you know that in the first 30 seconds of you meeting somebody, you've already made judgment about them? The first 30 seconds of meeting someone, you are judging their nonverbal cues. You are trying to see what is it that this person, you're trying to catch the vibe, 
right? So it's like, let me catch the vibe of who you are. And so in those first 30 seconds, you are judging them. You're like, hmm, let me see who, if you are who you say you are. So we're looking at facial expressions. We're looking at just gestures. We're looking at the eye contact, if they're nodding their head. I remember, um, and I'm not going to get into this too much because it's very controversial, but when R. Kelly first got ready to go on trial this last time, and he was sitting down with Gail King. And I think he was saying, I would never do that. I would, I would never do that. I would never. And they said that as even though he was saying no, I would never do that, his head was nodding yes. And just look, I'm gonna just throw it out there. I like R. Kelly. Okay. I, I like R. Kelly's music. I'm a fan of R. Kelly's music. Okay. So I don't know R. Kelly personally to judge him, but the music part I enjoy. Um, so this is not, you know, and I, I respect everybody's opinion about him. If that's your opinion, you got your own opinion. Um, but I remember hearing, hearing people say that his body language was saying, yes, I did it. But his words were saying, no, I didn't. And I just thought that that was so brilliant for um, someone who specializes in body language to still be able to say, hey, though you're saying one thing, your body is saying something different. Um, I think R. Kelly got something to say, your mind is yo, 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 your mind is telling me no, but your body is telling me yeah. Okay. Anyway, I ain't gonna go into it. I ain't gonna go into it. But remember, in the first 30 seconds, people are judging your nonverbal. Wait a minute. Let's talk about Miss Kathy real quick. Go, Miss Kathy. So let me share her story very quickly. Miss Kathy attended our four-week course. She came to us because she lapsed her, her certificate as a farm tech. She was a farm tech before. Her certificate lapsed, and she wanted to become a certified tech again. Um, and so she found us on a podcast, enrolled in the four-week course, and she is now a certified tech again. She passed her board exam. These are unofficial examination results. Obviously, these are preliminary results that you get right after you pass your test. But I just want to say that if Miss Kathy did it, you can too, okay? Um, I do have group tutorial sessions if you're interested, $30 per person or $45 per individual. If that's something that you're interested in, we're going to continue to move right along. The primary purpose of having good communication skills is what? Why do you think it's important to have good communication skills? Tell me what you think. Why do you think it's important? Is it to order medications? Is it to relate to the farm tech members? Is it to relate to a customer? Or is it all of the above? Another thing I would tell you, friend, is your communication skills is what is going to help you not only get the job, but it's also going to help you keep the job. It's also going to help you pass the board exam. Because if you've taken this exam before, you know that it's not hard questions. It's questions that you need to know how to process and how to understand so you can give back the correct answer. And in my video next week, I'm going to be breaking down how to answer questions and how to find keywords and questions so you can pass that test. I'm breaking that down next week in my in my uh, in my uh, video. OK, so make sure that you tune in next Sunday because. What I realize is a lot of you are not struggling because you don't know the content. You may be struggling because you can't really comprehend what the author is asking you. And that goes back to your communication. Um, but I've given you enough time and the answer is all of the above, okay? The primary purpose of having good communication skills is to order medications, to relate to your farm tech members, and to relate to your customers, right? We want to make sure that these customers feel heard, that they feel understood, okay? A person's voice can influence how the information is perceived based on what? If I come in here and I'm talking, if I got a tone and I'm like, look, you ain't passed that test the first time, so I don't know if you're going to pass it this time. Don't come to me. You're like, what? Mm-mm. We have to make sure that we're very careful as to how 
We are talking to people, what the speed sounds like, the volume, right? Right now I'm talking a little loud. My kids are home and they're playing video games. It's the summertime here in Houston, okay? We got in the pool the other day. So today is video games and chill, it's Sunday. So I'm loud, but right now I done toned it down a little bit. And you see what I'm saying? But if I say, well, then that makes you think, okay, she's talking a lot. What's going on, right? So that's the thing. You want to make sure that your voice gives the information the way that you want the, the information to be delivered. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Um, also, when you're at the pharmacy and someone's medication is ready, you don't want to pick up the loudspeaker yes kelly brian your medication is ready for your yeast infection it's like what kelly ain't coming to the pharmacy to get that medicine she ain't coming she she baby kelly done went to her car and got in her car and she ain't coming back she's gonna ask to get that prescription transferred to another pharmacy and you just violated hip so when you are in the pharmacy and you are calling on the customers, you want to make sure that your volume is loud enough for that customer to hear you and no one else around you, okay? Um, my husband, he gets frustrated when he goes to like the dealerships to get the car, you know, service and stuff. And um, obviously they try to upsell you, y'all know that. And they always want to find something else wrong and this, that, and the third. And so he like, well, why when he got ready to tell me what my total is and what was wrong with the car, he started talking loud, but he didn't treat nobody else like that. And I always laugh because I, I understand where he's coming from with that. Y'all, these little squeaky doors. Y'all hear these kids? Ooh, child. Um, but I always laugh because I can understand how it feels when you just feel like, okay, wait a minute, you're putting me on the spot and you're talking loud. Um so again, you just want to make sure that you're not that person. You're not the law mechanic at the dealership. Yeah, you got a yeast infection and this is what the doctor ordered. It's like, baby, don't nobody need to know that lady business. Okay, so make sure that you are consciously aware of that. Medication errors. There was this one time, and I think I've told this story before, when I had... I, yes, girl, me, yes, friend, me, yes, me. Lindsay had a medication error and I caught it before it went out, but I still got written up. No, I'm lying. I caught it before the patient took it. I, it was a person in the system had the same name and the same date of birth. The only way that I would have been able to distinguish the two people is by verifying their address. And this is important, y'all. When you're in the pharmacy, always make sure you verify the address because very seldom would the same person have the same name, the same date of birth, and the same address. And if that has happened, it could be that that person is located in the system twice. So anywho, I'm ringing the patient out. I'm working the drive-thru, and I'm working the front counter. And I'm kind of helping uh, my colleague at the drive-thru by pulling the medications that he needs. When the medication went out, I felt like I did something wrong. You know how you ever do something wrong and then you feel like feel like I made a mistake? That's how I felt. I felt like I made a mistake. I honestly felt like there was something in it that I did wrong. And so um, I told the pharmacist that day, I said, I think I made a mistake. They kept reassuring me I didn't, but I knew that I did. So it just kept tugging at me. So the next day I came back to work and I called the lady and I said, can you tell me what your prescription says? And she read it and she said, this is not my freaking script. This is the wrong medicine. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. I know that it is. That's why I'm calling you. Can you bring it back? Have you taken any of it yet? I have not taken any of it, but I could have. So she brought it back. She got to the pharmacy and of course she was yelling at me and she was cussing me out. And um, I just said, well, you know, although I've made the mistake, I'm not going to sit here to be verbally abused. And so I walked away from the counter and I told the pharmacist, the pharmacist went over there and handled it. And then um, when the pharmacy manager got there, like a week later, I got written up. 
Yeah. And then like two weeks later, I quit. Okay. I didn't quit because of the medication era. I was already in the process of doing something different. Um, but but yeah. So medication errors can be connected to illegible handwriting. It can be it can be connected to a technician's inexperience, even though I was an experienced technician. I think by that time I had had maybe eight years. So I definitely wasn't inexperienced. And then it could also be poor phone etiquette, right? Um, but what do you think? Do you think illegible handwriting, technician inexperience, or poor phone etiquette? Answering the phone and saying, hey, this is Walgreens. Uh, how can I help you? Or just answering the phone and saying, Walgreens, child, because I know I done called some people before and they just answered and that's all they say. They don't say, can I help you? They don't say, and I'm not saying it was Walgreens who did that, but I've called businesses before that have done that. They just answer the phone and they don't say, can I help you this, that, and the third. Maybe that irritates me. Um, but anywho, medication errors have been connected to illegible handwriting. Hence, that is why we now type the prescriptions out um, instead of allowing the doctors to write them. I think in Florida, all of their prescriptions have to be typed. I don't think they allow them to do any writing at all. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, child, y'all hear my little story. Okay, don't forget, don't forget, because you think, oh, that'll never happen to me, baby. I thought the same thing, and guess what? It indeed, it did, it happened. Um, the next one says, which of the following communication tasks is not one of the standard technician duties? Which one of the following communication tasks is not one of the standard technician duties? Handling angry patients, dealing with insurance representatives on the phone, child, because you'd be on hold 30 minutes, taking customers' refills over the phone, or counseling patients on their medications. Y'all know that we are technicians and we do not counsel medications or counsel patients on their medicine. We dispense, we type, we prepare. We don't counsel them. We don't. The pharmacist does. I have an entire video that talks about over 90, which is the law that informs you of how counseling works and when it's supposed to happen and why it's a thing, okay? So you can, um, I put the little, the, the little picture of the video down here in the bottom, child. Y'all see it on the right-hand side? Go back and look at that video because that video is going to tell you about over 90 and it'll tell you why we counsel, um, why we don't counsel and when counseling is appropriate, okay? If you are studying for this board exam, laws are going to be on that test and you need to know them. Which is the best way to handle somebody who's frustrated? What's the best way to handle somebody who's frustrated? Look, look, look at her down and exit for hell. She exit for hell. Because when you are dealing with somebody who's frustrated, first of all, let me tell you something. Let me come a little closer. When you're dealing with somebody who's frustrated and they're yelling and they got all this going on, please don't take it personal. Do not take it personal. You have to remember that these people are coming from somewhere else. They don't, they didn't just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to be mad at Lindsay today at the pharmacy. They didn't say that. They're coming from the doctor's office. They're coming from work. They're coming from somewhere that probably frustrated them. Also, y'all remember when people come to the pharmacy, they could have just lost a loved one or somebody could have just died, you know, or somebody could have just got diagnosed with herpes or HIV or cancer or diabetes or something that is life changing. Okay. So when someone is frustrated, the best thing to do is listen intently. Listen and help them to know that you care. And you can let them know you care by just listening because sometimes they just need to get it out. Now, don't stand there and be abused verbally. So if they calling you out your name and if they are being rude, where you're like, wait a minute, this is making me feel some type of way, go get your pharmacist. But if it's, you know, why is the medication not ready? 
Y'all tell me, the doctor told me that they called it in because baby, they so good for this one. The doctor told me that they called it in and when I got to the pharmacy, it would be ready. I always be thinking in my head like, baby, how the doctor going to tell you it's going to be ready when you get here when the doctor don't work here? Child, the only doctor in here is the pharmacist and it ain't your doctor. So hi. But again, we be nice, we be calm, we be friendly and we're patient and we listen intently. Now, now that you're in pharmacy, tell your mom and your cousin, your daddy, and your uncle to be kind to us in the pharmacy because we are preparing the prescription and we're checking behind the doctor to ensure that no medication error has taken place so your people can go home, complete the therapy, and begin to feel better. Because we all know when you leave the doctor's office, you still don't feel good. It's not until you leave the pharmacy that you're now like, okay, I'm going to get better, right? So again, tell your people to be nice to us because we're doing the very best we can and we're moving as quickly as we can, okay? Um, if a technician has tried to, has tried but is unable to resolve a customer's problem, what do we need to do? Y'all calling the police? Child, they said call the police. I ain't calling the police. But I am going to tell my pharmacist, mm -hmm. baby, I done did everything I can do for Sister Jones. Sister Jones have refused to let this work for her, and I'm concerned. Okay, let me get the ph pharmacist. Look, when I was in a pharmacy, I did very well with knowing my part and playing my part. It's like, know your lane and stay in it, okay? <laughs> Baby, I don't try to get to the right. I don't try to get to the left. I stay in my lane because as a technician, what I'm not trying to do is that pharmacist job. Uh-uh. They get paid the six figures to handle these customers and to handle customers who are unfriendly and customers who are trying to resolve a problem if you will, especially in the beginning of the year when everyone has a deductible and they don't understand their deductible because they didn't call their insurance company to get information on how that works. I go ahead and say, hey, Ms. Clark has a question. Ms. Clark, the pharmacist will be with you in just a second. Thank you so much. She's going to be with you in just a second. Okay. Is there anything I can help you with and while we wait? Okay. Well, she'll be right over. Hang tight. See that? Baby, that's how you handle them. Look, don't let nobody pull you out of character. You at job, you at your job, you at your job doing the best you can. You're doing the things that you know to do. Can continue to communicate with love, with passion, with compassion, not passion. Love and compassion, understanding. Right? Making sure that the customer feels heard because. At the end of that eight-hour shift, you get to go home, and you don't have to go home with Miss Clark, okay? You don't have to go home with brother or uh, Mr. Johnson. You're going home with yourself, right? So just know, happy pharmacist, if you had a question, and that's it, okay? Look, don't take it personal. Do not take it personal. Um, if any other part of the prescription is illegible, technicians should do what? Are you picking up the phone and calling the doctor? Can you pick up the phone and call the doctor? Do you have legal right to pick the phone up? As a technician, do you have legal right to pick the phone up and ask the doctor for clarification? Yes or no? No. Thank you. You don't. And the reason you don't is because when they clarify the prescription, it A, becomes a new prescription and B, you can't take a new prescription. What are the two reasons? A, it becomes a new prescription and B, you can't take a new prescription over the phone, okay? So we're not going to call the doctor. Are we gonna ask another tech for help? This is my little clock for my eyeglasses. Oh my girl, what this say? You know what this say? Both of y'all over there. I think that's a three. It kind of looked like an E, but I think it's a three. Girl, look. Miss Thomas' life is on the line, okay? And y'all trying to figure out the letter. We're not going to do that either. 
The other one say, see what medication the patient is taking and try to figure it out. Try to figure it out on your own. Say, well, baby, let me do some medication reconciliation. Let me look at what you did. Let me do some con comparison. No, honey, we're not going to do none of the above on this one. Because what we are going to do is get our pharmacist. Pharmacist, I can't read this script. The, the, the handwriting is illegible. No matter how I hold it, I can't. What does it say? Does it? Pharmacist say, don't worry about it, Lindsay. I'm going to call the doctor. The pharmacist calls the doctor. Oh, the doctor's office is closed for the day. Go ahead and let uh, Ms. Lopez know that the doctor's office is closed for today and we'll give her doctor a call tomorrow. Okay, I will do that. Ms. Lopez, the doctor's office is closed today. We did try to call them to verify the prescription. Unfortunately, we were not able to reach anyone. Is it okay if we give them a call tomorrow to prepare the prescription and to just verify to make sure everything is correct? Oh, yes, Miss Lindsay. Thank you all so much for going the extra mile. I really appreciate it. This is a new doctor. I've never been before. And so I appreciate you guys for checking behind me. You are checking behind the doctor. You are always um, so helpful there. And that's why I come to this pharmacy. Absolutely, Miss Lopez. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch. You can look to, to have a call maybe tomorrow afternoon. Okay. All right, Miss Lindsay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, Miss Lopez. Have a great evening. Everybody is happy. Miss Lopez is not going to be hurt. You didn't get hurt. We didn't make no medication errors. We communicated properly and we've saved the day because that's what we do, baby. We are heroes in that pharmacy, okay? It could be a pharmacist in there, but without the technicians, it don't work. It don't work without us, okay? So make sure you're ready to put that cape on because you are a hero, okay? And we are saving patients and we are making sure people get what they need and we're saving the day because we're first responders and that's what we do, okay? Um, this one was short, quick, and easy. This didn't cost you nothing. This didn't hurt nobody. We ain't hurt nobody today. Um, I just want y'all to know that Miss Kathy did her thing. And if you want to be like Miss Kathy, go ahead and make sure that you take your studying very seriously, okay? I always tell you, study 30 minutes at a time, four times a day. If you study 30 minutes at a time, four times a day, that gives you two hours a day. If you study two hours a day, seven days a week, two times seven is 14. That's a part-time job. If you do that, you're good. You put in the work to gain the reward. You reap what you sow, okay? What we're not going to do is get to the table and be reading the same book and on the same page for the last 30 minutes. No, no. Our brains don't operate like that. Our brains don't tick tock like that. That is, you know, that's unrealistic. Those are unrealistic expectations. Be kind to yourself in this journey. Be kind to yourself on this journey, okay? 30 minutes at a time, four times a day is all that it takes, okay? Anyway, I love y'all. Have a good rest of your Sunday and I will see you same place next week, same time. Bye.